Welcome, folks, to a game order production. We're going to be doing the demo for Quest of Infinity. Now, one of the composers of this game actually messaged me on YouTube and asked me if I'd be doing an LP on this, so I kind of took that as a request. This is the new company that they have started to kind of branch off and do their own line of games. Since the genre of Adventure Point and Clicks is making a pretty strong comeback. Uh, a lot of it due to this company who did remakes of Space Quest 2, King's Quest 3. <laughs> oh, oh my! Oh, stop it! Stop it, Ice! You're so wicked! Oh, stop it! I said no! Alicia, what's going on in there? Shh, it's my father! Nothing, Daddy! Open this door at once! But Daddy, I'm changing! I'm coming in! You have to go! But I've just got my boots off. Don't get cheeky now, seriously. My father will kill me. Daddy! Elysia! Daddy, no! Why, oh, you devil! I'll kill you! That wasn't my fault. She tricked me. I'll trick you, devil! Oh, I'm out of here. <laughs> If I ever get my hands on you! Hello, sir. How are you this evening? I'm exhausted, friend. Tell me, where are you going? Uh, I'm off across the mountains. Where are you going? The same. Mind if I tag along? Not at all. We can sing songs together. Great. Sounds good to me. Sounds fantastic. Several weeks later. And several songs later as well. town of Booksville. Hence the broken ass sign in the background. Well, here you go. Is this okay? Yes, this is fine. Thank you. For your trouble. Well, thank you, sir. Well, I'm off. Heading north to the castle. Maybe I'll see you again sometime? You just may. Farewell, sir. Hello, my friend. Welcome. Welcome to the town of Volksville. I trust your travels were not too unpleasant? Just fine, thank you. Excellent, excellent. My name is Udo. I am a seller of rare and precious trinkets, as well as a great source of news for the town and all across the valley. You mean, you're a gossip? Uh, call me what you may, as long as you call me friend. We'll see. Ah, cautious. I like that. Please come to see me anytime you need anything. Anything? All right, so here we are at the main quest screen. As you can see, this follows in the ilk lineage, lineage of uh, most of your Sierra games here. Uh, this one obviously re will remind you of the Quest for Glory or Hero Quest series that Sierra released. Um, there's even multiple paths that you can take in the demo here. We have our stats, strength, agility, weapon use, intelligence, athletics, bluff, influence, stealth, Thievery. Ah! Right, I'm going to move the speed up here a little bit. And we'll make a save. This kind of breaks down the different buttons here. You can see a little Kickstarter promo. The Kickstarter for this game is over at this point. 
I had invested into many other games. Uh, I wanted to invest in this, but you gotta know when to draw the line unless you're rich, which I'm not. I will be purchasing a big box version of this once it is released, if I can. Um, but as you can see, it's already a beautiful game, even from the first few screens. The music is great. Hey there, Udo. Well, hello there, friend. How can I help you today? Getting multiple dialogue options here. You can ask about the valley. Well, you're in the Valley of Krasna right now. We're part of the kingdom of Lonaria. Well, honestly, it's a vast realm. The castle of the king is to the north of ways, but it's been difficult to travel up there since the spring flooding washed out the main bridge over the river Silmawin. The river? It's the great river. It not only runs through our land, but almost the whole continent. It's called Coninglist. It's a lovely place, actually. Very beautiful. And the king treats his subjects well. Castle of the king? It's called Coninglist. It's a lovely place, actually. Very beautiful. Alright. Ah, oh, the people's village. You'll not find a finer, no friendlier town around these parts. Everything's kept shipshape around here by all Rayford. He likes to keep things nice and orderly. And for your amusement, there's plenty of shops and sites to see. You can check out the inn, or maybe visit the general store. There's a tobacconist for all your exotic smoking and spice needs. Oh, and don't forget the magic shop. We've also got an apothecary. And there's an old graveyard on the edge of town. Sweet. So as you can see, you can delve deeper into each of these conversations. He's a tough old SOB, that's for sure. He's been the magistrate around these parts for the last 30 years or so. I'd say the town's so well kept because of him. He likes to stay in the good graces of the king. He's a pleasant enough fella, but don't let that fool you because he doesn't suffer fools or troublemakers one bit. He'll crack your skull if you give him an excuse to. The inn is on the east part of town. It's a big old place. I think it was a giant meat hill in its former life. A meat hill? But over the years it just settled into being an inn. You can get a reasonable room and some decent food there. The innkeeper's name is Kessel. Tell him Udo sent you, you'll get the Udo discount. It's right in the center of town, next to the tobacco shop. You know it's no frills. What you see is what you get, but what you get isn't always what you see, eh? Yeah, I know what you mean. No doubt it has the kinds of supplies you need to get about in the valley. The proprietor is Owen. He and his wife are usually in there running the place together. Honestly, I don't know her name. I always call her Mrs. Owen. Ah, let me tell you. If there is a center of leisure and luxury in this town, it is the tobacconists. Armand has the finest leaf imported from all over the world. He takes pride in his smokable products and pays premium to import the best. It's worth it, though. He's got a great back room where the upper crust like to hang out, discuss business and smoke their pipes. Real nice sofas and chairs back there. I've only been a few times myself, but it was most enjoyable. Let me tell you that Prospero is definitely one of those enigmatic characters. He's got a big, creepy house toward the south of town. The gargoyles out front give me the heebie-jeebies, but his knowledge and products are second to none. Yeah, it's a little old graveyard. Kind of quaint and peaceful, actually. The graves there are really old, as it was the first place they started burying people when they started the town. I guess they realized they could only fit so many bodies in there, so there's another larger cemetery outside of town. Now that place is a sight to see. There's a lot of tombstones, but the mausoleums are crazy. Plus, the old caretaker's mansion is out there. No one's lived there for a few years. I think most of the transients around stay there. 
I hope you don't have to stay there, mister. Me too. Alright, so as you can see, you can ask several different things. Good luck, sir. And remember if you need. Let's go ahead and do some looking around here. You see the barrel, which is unremarkable. But then you think of how funny it would be if you had some angry dwarf shoved in there yelling and pounding on the wood. Possibly a Hobbit reference. It's a small, dark cluster of rocks. You could smash something on them, you suppose, but they're mainly there just for decoration. Possibly a hint. You glance over the bottles on the stand. They're cheap perfumes for women. You've seen stuff like this sold in bazaars all over the world. Now this is going to be a 100% blind LP. Most of my Let's Plays and walkthroughs that I do, um, I play through them once, so I kind of know where I'm going and I'm not... Don't pick this stuff up and smoke it, man. Screwing around. Don't pick... You stare intently at the grass. It's so... green, man. You could get lost in it, man. Give up this life of moral turpitude. Join up with a couple of other guys that play some instruments and travel across the land playing mandolin. Then you shake yourself out of it and realize that you are grateful that you aren't dead. Lots of little... in the windows and... hidden jokes in this game already. That reference obviously to being a hippie smoking weed and listening to some good old classical hippie music. But that looks like a damn rock there to you me. Stay, you stay... you st Guess it's not. Head north in town. Ooh. Scary. Kill, pillage, and destroy. That's all you think about, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Actually, it is. Let's attack this guy. You'd probably lose your sword in his fat rolls if you did that. Let's not do that, then. I might need my sword. Let's talk to him instead. Of chopping off Good his head. Good day, sir! Good day, fat ass! Yes, it certainly is. Yes, it certainly is. I would stay in chat, but I must be going. We've got so much happening today. Rayford wanted me to get something, but I can't remember. We so rarely have public executions. You are coming to the public square, right? Of course, I love decapitations. Of course, friend. I wouldn't miss this. Excellent. See you there. May crime always cower in the light. Indeed. Well, this should be an interesting day. I should make my way to the public square. Eventually. A potted plant hangs above the stable. It looks like no one tends it. How sad. Alright, let's pick up the pace here, buddy. It's a pretty little alcove. You wonder who usually hangs out there. The door is locked. Bollocks! This must be the mage shop. Ahoy! Ahoy. We're not at sea, are we? We're all adrift in some way. How insightful. Allow me to quote that in my book of Who Cares. Ha! Ah! Now, young man, is there something I might help you with? My name? Well, you may call me Prospero. I make it most of the town calls me Mr. Magic. It amuses them. Magic? Well, that's quite a discussion. Perhaps we can converse about it when we have more time. There's an execution coming soon. And we'd better not be late. Rayford gets into quiet a tizzy about these things. Goodbye.
You can't go up these stairs into Prospero's personal quarters. Why not? I've commanded it. What kind of creepy magic shop would it be without them? Now, this really is your kind of place. Mysterious, abstruse and very pentagramish. You reside in the local dealership of Magic and Conjury, run by Prospero, or as he's referred to by the local delinquents, Mr. Magic. The sigil is probably his trademark logo or something. He seems to have a penchant for the star-shaped symbols. Now, this re- You see a tall, thin, bearded man behind the counter. Get some staves across the... Uh, you want a wicked scepter. Receptors. Wicked bad. You try with all your might. Everyone seems to be heading toward public square for this execution, so... Let's continue to explore. You'd knock on the door, but you really have no desire to be polite. You'd knock... You have nothing... Oh, shit! Uh-oh. Deciding that both locked doors and Rafe had piss you off, you raise your boot to the door. The door breaks off its hinges and Rayford's home is now open. You're quite pleased with yourself. What you're not so pleased with is the guards who walk by, see your mischief and drag you to the execution square. Rayford decides to make two heads roll today. Oops! You're dead! Two heads are better than one. It's double the pleasure, it's triple the fun. <laughs> Alright, so no kicking in the doors. causes death. You can also just click on your walk button up here and you can go into a sneak mode. Or if you're going to play along the thief path, you can do some prowling there. Or you can go to a sprint mode where you can run. Not too sure if that affects stamina or anything. We'll simply stay in the, whack, the fast walk mode. You don't want to fuss with the well right now. You don't need water, and frankly, right now, you don't need trouble. It's a well. You're in... <coughs> this barrel once held some top quality tobacco leaf. You can smell it. Now it's just a decoration. I bet, though, if you burn the barrel, it would smell great. And probably get you ridiculously stoned. Look, they're closed, moron. No matter how hard you pull on the doors, they won't open. Well, I know a way to open them. You, like a vagrant, decide to urinate in the cauldron. It's your way of saying, I was here. Look, they- Guess they're closed. Everyone's at the public square, let's go. Sweet, I'm drunk. As you begin to speak, the town drunk decides it's time to leave. Damn, even the town drunk won't talk to me. It's harsh. Let's check out the pube. I mean the pub. You have no reason to talk to him yet. About this beautiful bartenders. What can I get you? Sweet. Well, kid.
I'm a lonely bartender in a small town. You here to save me, eh? The town of Canada. Aw, oh, the lads are good guys. Farmers. They drink their crops. He's all right. Can be a right bastard. Doesn't like public drunkenness or fights. He can crack a skull or two. Welcome to the Jolly Rogering, home of ales and lager. Occasionally we get some whiskey in here. Nothing fancy. I'm just gonna keep talking Sounds to her to see her cleavage. Well, it better. You're out of luck if you're looking for anything better around here. Boobies! We brew it downstairs. It's shite. But it does the trick. Shite. It's one of my favorite words. He's a big bastard, ain't he? I don't even know who the hell Kurt is. Welcome to the job. Sounds fun. Well, it. Back goodbye. All right, I haven't even checked my inventory. Uh oh. You got a problem, pal? Now look at this dick licker. The only problem I have, friend, is with the amount of nose hair you are sporting. You're trying to catch boogers as a hobby. You're quite the smart ass, friend. You're lucky there's an execution in town and there's more guards around. Dude, you're weak sauce. You're lucky I have a pair of tweezers. <laughs> you're funny, friend. Let me buy you a drink. Let me drink your drink. A toast! Thank God we're not the poor bastard whose head is about to roll. May we never face the gallows. Or marriage. I'll Come drink to that afterwards. Let's have some more drinks and talk about things. Got zero out of zero points? Man, I suck. How much gold do we got? Here's our inventory. Just a leather pouch filled with coins. Twenty gold. It's a decent sword. Better because it was free. You stole it. All right, let's talk with these hardy fellows over here. Stop annoying people. Let me do what I want to do, dick licker. Leave the guy. There's a glass mug next to a knife, way up on a shelf. You never know when you need a mug and a knife, you know what they used to say? This is true. As long as it gets you plastered, you don't care what it says on the bottle. You have no reason. You have. He ignores you. Perhaps you should talk to the man on the other side. You won't let me. Stupid. He just told me to come talk to him. Now he won't talk to me. Makes a lot of sense. But not really. So we're gonna leave. You don't need... <clears throat> A sign on the door says, Closed for the demo. You wonder what the hell that even means? I have no clue. Ridiculous. Time to speed up the walk to Max. That did a lot. That's what I'm talking about. Let's run this guy to death. It's a horse. You don't need to do that, yet. You don't feel like dealing with its occupants at the moment. You don't feel like you doing dick. grab a log, but you'd have to carry it, and you have no reason to now. You play around with it, but nothing seems to happen. Hmm. 
Was he talking about the door? Or something in his pants? Hello, baby! Oh, hello, my lord. Oh, well, then hello. I must be on my way now. Take care. I must be on my way as well. Right behind you. Look at these fine fellows. This must be the graveyard. Shooting well, some craps. Boys, we better stop here for now. Rayford's got the execution going on soon. Don't worry, we'll be back later, if you're game for some action. They're too busy with their dice game to talk to you. This is a rather nice fountain. The water is pumped from the pond outside into the castle here. You take a look at one of the gravestones. It reads, Walter Reed died in winter of dysentery. What a way to go. Cold and shitting yourself to death. You shudder when you think of it. You take a look at... There's no point getting to know them now. You take a look... Some fishermen. Oh, didn't see you there. Been messing with this net for the last hour. That's your problem, Brattle. Isn't the pond a little small for the net? Aye, it is. But I lost me pole just a bit earlier. Biggest catfish I ever seen. I've dug bait the bait in the goal and took off. Yanked the pole right out of me end. That's unfortunate. Sure is. It's me livelihood. That were the best pole I ever had. Who knows where that demon fish took it? They are crafty creatures. What are you talking about? They're as stupid as a pile of rocks. That one just got lucky. It's me best one. I'd give anything to get it back. I sell them, I eat them. Rattle is me name. Thanks for asking. Most people just call me Fishmonger. Seven for me pole, I'll be doing great today. Well, me and me boy stay in a cabin just a bit from here. Apparently I smell too bad to live in town. Honey tiny bastards. They'll eat me damn fish, oh yes, but they won't let me live there. You smell like bloody asshole. Well, me and Talk to you soon. I should make my way to the town square. Bring in the prisoner. Oh, this guy's screwed. Wait a minute, is that Ned Stark? It is by the edict of the king and the laws of the land of the Valley of Krasna in the kingdom of Lonaria that here in the town of Volksville, I, J.S. Rayford, am here to carry out the sentence in the matter of the people versus the criminal Marcus Van Houten, who has been proven guilty of theft and murder. Does the criminal have anything to say? Let me head roll. I defended myself and stole to feed my own starving body. If this is life, then my head is better served up fresh on a pool for all you people. Very well. Marcus Van Houten, you are sentenced to death by the automatic blade. May the next life be better The automatic this. blade. As long as I don't have to look at your filthy face, Rayford, your conscience is almost as filthy as my... Oh. 
Take his head, tar it, and put it on a pike outside town to warn others of our justice. His headless body to a crow's cage to be pecked clean. And thus it is for criminals here. I will not tolerate them in my jurisdiction. Do you understand? You are all witnesses here today. Sweet. I love the blood effects. Rayford would like to see you in his office. <laughs> Rayford can kiss my grits. Hello there. You are a visitor to our town, I take it? Oh yes, I am. Just admiring the beauty of the area. The river is quite a sight. <laughs> yes, it is, stranger. Yes, it is. Might I have the pleasure of your name? Yes, my name is Mr. Rowan. Mr. William Rowan. Pleasure. J.S. Rayford, Town Magister. Pleasure. Well, I have some matters to attend to. Please, stop by my office later. I'd love to chat with you some more. Sounds good. Good evening, lawman. Good evening, Mr. Rome. What an asshole. Alrighty. What we'll be doing on this playthrough is doing the wizard's playthrough or the magic user's playthrough. There's actually multiple playthroughs. As opposed to the Quest for Glory series where you picked your class in the beginning, this one you kind of decided through your actions. Um, so this LP will complete the magic user playthrough and I invite you to go download the demo so that you can try the thief and the brigand playthrough. See, the blacksmith is now out. Nice night, eh? Yes, it is. Clear night. Always is after a man has been executed. Nasty business. It certainly is. How can I help you? The fires of my forge have burned for many years. It's been my family's trade for ages. The fire is part of my family. It never extinguishes. This fire to my knowledge, has burned since my father's 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 father started it. It's a lot of fathers. We tend to it every day. My father tended to it for his father, I tended it for mine, and my boy tends to the fire for me. He makes sure it is fueled and fostered every day. I make weapons when I must. I do not lie or boast when I claim them to be the best. Make me a vorpal blade. If I were an instrument that must take a man's life, I would have that man be slain with a weapon of purity and strength, so that he is sent to meet the Maker with honor. Goodbye, stranger. I do hope your time in our town is a pleasant one. Notice the tongs here. pair of blacksmith's tongs, used to hold items in and over the fire. Whatever it is you're trying, you play. Now I did have to tinker around with this puzzle for a little while. Um, so before I actually did this scene, I saved and figured it out. For me, it's best to go into prowl mode here. You, of course, want to wait till the blacksmith turns his back. You sneak up to the horse and untie the rope. 
Lucky for you, the blacksmith didn't see you. I tried untying it several times without being in prowl mode and got caught every time, so... I'm assuming that has something to do with it. Again, you want to wait till he turns his back before we smack this horse on his ass to send him running. This isn't even the tricky part. You slap the horse and it runs away. Ah, my horse! Now you can pick up the blacksmith's tongs. The problem with this is I was you running... You pick up the tongs. You had better use them quickly as the blacksmith could return at any moment. Right, you have a certain amount of screens that you can travel before he comes back. This is the only path you can take. Any other path and you will get your ass busted You had better killed. return those tongs soon. Who knows how long the blacksmith will be gone. We're going to use the tongs to get the guy's fishing pole out of the water, which is kind of hard to see here. And you want to make sure you run back the exact same path. Any deviation and you will die. You place the tongs back where you found them. Alright, now that the uh, old boy's tongs are back, he won't be pissed off and try to kill us. Well, the other thing I did that I don't think I did previously, make sure you take the beer mug from the tavern once you uh, buy a drink or get bought a drink. You want to take that beer mug off the counter there. And we can give old boy his fishing pole back. Why bless your heart! You're a right excellent bastard, eh? Look here. This is all I got at the moment, but it's pretty handy. It's a bowl of fish oil. You can use it in cooking, you can sell it, you can fix squeaky doors with it. It's handy! Thanks for helping me out. No problem. It was my pleasure. Now you can do certain things during certain times of the day. Um, for instance, if you wait until night, you can't actually finish that quest. Because the fisherman will no longer be there at night. Crikey! His damn head fell right off into the stump. Whoa. Got to admit, that was equal parts cool and gross, as there were still a few rotting tendons holding it on. You peer inside and notice an old steel helmet, complete with horns. It's too bad this guy died because he might have been a badass. You take the helm, figuring you could use it better. Let's talk to this mage guy again. Just open the door. So I'm trying to do, bitch. Ah, yes. Magic. I do owe you a conversation about this. Let me ask you, what do you know of magic? Mostly disappearing rabbits, tricks with cards, and how to charm a woman out of her virtue. Ah, yes. Most fine and excellent forms of entertainment. But no, those are not attributes of real magic. Oh yeah? Magic. Magic is the essence of the soul. Pulled forth from the ether and made physical and active by the sheer force of will that comes from within us. 
and within everything around us. I realize this sounds like a lot of philosophical nonsense, but it is an art to wield it. One has to train the mind as well as the body, and you must learn to combine the spiritual with the physical. Combining spiritual with physical? Buddy, that's what got me in trouble with the Baron's daughter in the last town I came from. I'm not speaking of copulation, young man. To know spells, well, the incantation is only part of a larger process. Knowing the words to say aloud is one part. That physical act accesses the mental acuity, which allows you to tap into the metaphysical. But magic comes from combining the metaphysical with the physical. See, in order to cast, say, a flame projectile, you not only need to know the chant for the spell, but you'd have to have a physical vessel for it. And what would that be? <laughs> it's these kinds of secrets that one learns when one becomes a user of magic. Would you be interested in becoming a user of magic? Oh, yes. I thought you might. I could sense the power inside of you. When you become my student, I will teach you to bend the world to your will and how to control the most incredible of forces. Tonight. Sorry about the phone ringing. I'm actually working right now. First, I need to test your mental acuity. This isn't about to get weird, is it? <laughs> no. I'll merely lay down cards from my deck here. Each card has a mate, an exact match. All you need to do is select a card and then find its mate. Sounds simple enough. Yes, but you may only choose the wrong mate three times. On your third, the test is done. And you may walk out of here without my teachings. I've had worse offers. Let's proceed. The night. With his... Ah, the fool. There's one who endlessly follows, but is whom he follows worthy of follow? Yeah, yeah, who gives a shit? The Reaper sits in a throne, watching over everything we do. He breathes on your back, and offers those leaving this plane more solace than others would. The quest is the tower. You I felt there is a beast that lives outside of town. I need you to not only defeat him, you need to defeat the beast! His head. That is a part of his brain, the hypothalamus that I need for a spell I shall teach you. Great! Kill the beast. Get head. I can do that. Get head. I can do that too. Anything else? Yes. I need several drops of a dead man's blood. You'll need to put it in a non-metal container, for metal will spoil its composition. Well, I'll try. I should be back soon. Excellent. I will aid you in avoiding the town gates. Getting back in is your own affair. I shall see you soon, magic user. Alright, so here we are outside of town. There's Mr. Uh, what's his name's head? It's the severed head of Marcus Van Houten. Sadly, it doesn't look too good separated from his body. We do need human blood. We have a mug, so we should be able to get it from that. You can't use that on the dead man's head. You pull out your knife and stab the head. Surprisingly, it starts to bleed. You fill your pint glass with some of the dripping blood. All right, there's our dripping blood. Now let's go find this beast. It's dark and gloomy. Probably a good idea to save. Beastico, where are you, Beastico? There he is. Ah. 
Combat is kind of pretty much based on luck, to be honest. In other words, not getting lucky. Might as well just fucking reload. The beast finally shakes you off like a bad STD. Poked full of holes and losing blood by the pint. You manage to breathe out one last your mother joke to the beast before you expire. The beast, tired from its fighting, eats your ass first because it's the softest point on you. Fantastic. Any monster that eats ass first is my kind of monster. <laughs> Suddenly, Yeah, bitch. That was a display of mastery and skill. The beast is dead. Don't forget to chop his head off. You take out your sword and cut off his head. We gotta get back in town. But the gate's locked. You can't climb that yet, but you gain some experience. You can't. Are they joking? No, my athletics is actually going up. So keep trying. You. 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 You, you, you. Come on, you, you bastard. You Where climb you over the gate. There must be. Excellent. You've defeated the beast. You are strong and clever. I still need one more component, though. The blood of a dead man. I trust you can find some. Remember, I need an ample amount. Oh, there's plenty that was dripping from that guy's head. You try with all... Excellent. Now I can finish this spell I've been working on. Cheers to you! And to you, my good man. Now, I can teach you the secrets of the universe. How to bend reality to your will. I think you have an aptitude for it. And with the skills I teach you, become infinitely more powerful. Come, you have much to learn and study. The life of a sorcerer is one filled with wonder and limitless power. You are only limited by your imagination. You can learn the powers that can bend reality to your will in Quest for Infamy. Alright folks, that was the short sorcerer's playthrough, sorcerer playthrough of the Quest for Infamy. Again, go to the site, Infamous Adventures, download Quest for Infamy. Buy it when it comes out. Also, for those of you who may be viewing this that had part to do with the Quest for Infamy, feel free to leave comments, advertise, whatever you want to on this particular Let's Play video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Oh, what's this? Master, 
The beast has been slain. My pet. Who has done this? Nice name. A stranger, it appears. Mm. Contact our friend in town. This one may be trouble. And that's it, folks. Thanks for watching.